Hello everyone and welcome back to the Yukon Huskies Dynasty. Yukon has started the season 0 and 1 and it doesn't get any easier this week as we face the Utah Utes. As a reminder, if you haven't seen our schedule, we start with three of our toughest opponents on the whole season back to back to back. West Virginia, of course, and then Utah and Arizona. It doesn't get a lot easier with Iowa State and then Syracuse. And then we kind of have a break in the middle of the season outside of maybe Arizona State and Purdue, obviously is not a slouch either but i would definitely say the first half of our season is a lot more difficult and i'll try to remember to show you guys the big 12 standings every single week because obviously they are very important this is the first year we're in a conference and where that will really matter as for recruiting not much has changed yet we're waiting on tank easy to get to his top five so that we can start doing a hard sell but currently we are gaining the most influence though georgia did gain the second most influence this past week and we know the kind of recruiting power they carry adonis keo however is to his top five so we have switched to a hard sell and soft sell we have a really good hard sell for him it includes all a pluses and then really not much else to mention at the moment we're winning most of our battles or gaining on other ones like with melvin graves and at this point we're kind of just waiting for these top guys to commit so that we can start pushing points towards some three star guys down at the bottom of our board welcome everybody to the first road game of of the season for the Yukon Huskies as they travel to Salt Lake City to take on the Utah Utes. Utah not currently ranked but one of the best teams in the Big 12 on paper at the very least taking on Yukon a brand new face to the conference. Utah will start with the football, so here's a look at their offense. They're led by sophomore quarterback Isaac Wilson. The running back room is Mike Mitchell and John Randall Jr., both juniors. And the wide receivers are Daedrin Zipperer, Nico Wynn, and Cade Stefanik. And then you'll also see tight end Dallin Bentley. So the Utes pretty undeniably a better team. Let's see if the Huskies can keep up as Randall gets the carry, breaks a tackle, and gets three to start the day. Second and seven from the 27, as it's going to be a handoff. Mitchell to the outside. Great tackle by Gerard Byler. Empty set for Wilson now on third and five from the 29. And he's under some pressure from Curvin's chute. Makes the throw, but it's caught out of bounds. And it's a three and out for the Utah Utes to start the day. So here comes the UConn offense for the first time today. Starting from their own 40. Really good starting field position. As Darrell Robinson going to get a good carry. Great blocking up the middle. And it's a first down to the 47. Second and 10 from the 47. Evers back to pass. Going to check it down to Cam Edwards. Can't make the man miss. And it's no gain. Third and 10. On third down and 10, we'll go to the air. And Evers, with some time, it runs out and it falls incomplete. Fourth down, UConn punts it right back. Are we in for another defensive battle? As it's an RPO and that is incomplete. Good coverage by Cam Chadwick. It may have actually been Kai Stokes in coverage. I think Chadwick was on a blitz there. Second and 10 from the 16. It's a handoff, Mitchell, and Joey Terrell is there. Third and nine. From the 17, it is third down and nine. A man jumps across. It's Calvin Whitaker, the redshirt freshman D tackle. And that penalty will make it a third and four, much more manageable distance. I still sort of anticipate them going to the air on a third and four from the 22. And they do indeed. Man open over the middle. And it was decent coverage by Chadwick. He just didn't even attempt to get a hand on it. So the first first down of the day for the Utah Utes. And they're to the 31. And it's going to be a handoff. Mitchell Terrell there. A loss of two. The middle linebacker turning into a stud right before our eyes. I don't care who you are. You have to be excited about the linebacker room here in Connecticut. You've got guys like Joey Terrell, Raheem Lovelace, Gerard Byler. And that time it's Jamie Santos making the tackle and setting up a third and two. Third and two. Raheem Lovelace jumped off sides, but he didn't snap the ball. Man in motion to the right is the tight end. And it's a handoff up the gut. Mike Mitchell Hutchison is there, and so is Santos. They don't get it. And they'll elect to punt it away on fourth and inches from the 41. Will it be another defensive battle like it was against West Virginia? So far, it's starting to look like it. As Darrell Robinson breaks a tackle, but lucky to get a yard there. This offensive line is just so quick to let players through. It's hard at times to look downfield at all. This time we don't have to, though, as they leave Angler open. 
And that's a free first down for the tight end. Second and eight. Play action. Evers fumbles the football, hits the turf, and it's recovered by the offensive lineman. And look at this wear and tear on Nick Evers. I don't think we can keep him in the game like that. Throw power negative 12. Took a huge hit there and fumbles. We can use the true freshman Dorian Tobin up to four times this season, and he will maintain his redshirt status. But bring in Tucker McDonald. He's probably the most similar to Nick Evers in terms of his ability. I think we give the true freshman the shot. I think that he's the future of the position. Dorian Tobin, of course, an incredible athlete, maybe the best athlete on the entire team. Remember, he has 98 speed. But to give it, get him comfortable, we'll go to a screen play on a third down and 20. And maybe Robinson makes somebody miss. I mean, he does, but ends up just short at a fourth and four. And we'll have to punt it away. But until I see Nick Evers come down off the wear and tear, I'm going to leave Dorian Tobin in as the quarterback. For now, we're back on the defensive side of the ball, though. Let's see if UConn's defense can continue to keep up as Randall gets the carry. Nowhere to go. Gains a yard here. Second and nine from the 19. It's a handoff Mike Mitchell again. What great blocking he got as Kai Stokes brings him down, but it's a first for the Utes. Second and nine as this should be the final play of the first quarter. It's a handoff Mitchell. Joey Terrell is there. I love his elite speed. Third and nine as we start the second quarter. Can the Yukon Huskies defense get off the field once again? Over the middle, open, and that's a first down for the Utes. First and 10 from the 46 as they near midfield, and it's an RPO wide open. On the right side is the wideout. Santos can't catch up to him, and that's going to be a touchdown for Utah. The coverage completely blown there as they bit on the run part of the run pass option. But Isaac Wilson gets it to his wideout. That's David Washington, a guy I didn't actually mention. He appears to have insane speed. Santos. No slouch, 91 speed. Clearly this guy a little faster. Here we go, an opportunity for Dorian Tobin as he's going to step up but step into a sack as that is just pitiful from Ben Morosky. Second and 17, I'm anticipating a huge blitz here from the Utes. So we'll go back to pass and we're going to lob it up for Marcus Angler, the big body tight end. He can't make the grab. Only he comes down with that. But now it's a third and 17 situation or Dorian Tobin, as he's gonna step up to run here. Remember, elite athlete, he'll slide down, but gets the first at the 30. So a big first and 10 as Tobin back to pass again. Scrambling to the right side, could take off to run again, and he does. Goes out of bounds at the 35. Do probably need to be a little bit careful with him due to the fact that he can run so well, he might experience more wear and tear than average. Second and four from the 35. We'll go to the ground with Darrell Robinson. And he will get a first down to the 45. On second and seven, we'll go back to the air. Tobin underneath finds Jackson Harper. And that's a first down for the Huskies. Tobin does notably have a quicker release, I am noticing, than Nick Evers as well. First and 10 from the 42. As Tobin's back to pass, takes a hit as he throws, falls incomplete. On second and 10. We look to throw again with Tobin. This time a screen set up for Edwards. Makes the grab, jukes to the outside, and gets a first to the 31. Nearing the red zone now. Harper in motion, and it's a jet touch pass to him. Need this block from Darrell Robinson. We get it, but there's a flag down. And I bet this is holding, and it's coming back. It's on the wide receiver, Kylish Hicks. What would have been a first and 10 is now a first and 20 from the 41, and we'll start with a handoff Robinson. He'll get three yards. Second and 17 as Tobin is back to pass. Has Angler, and Angler has the football, and he's inside the 20, has another first down to the 16. Is it just me, or is this offense looking kind of nice with Dorian Tobin at the helm? It's definitely been operating a little bit smoother. Now from the 16, Tobin will hand off to Robinson. He gets two. On second and eight from the 14, Tobin will look to pass. RPO over the middle, but it's intercepted. What a play! by the linebacker for the Utah Utes as that's an interception for Dorian Tobin. It looked like we had Jackson Harper. And I mean, that's the throw. That was the play to make on the RPO. I guess just too much air on it. Didn't get it out quick enough. 
such an excellent drive for Tobin and it yeah was an RPO and the ball just needs to get out a little bit quicker to Harper I think so that's on me that's a user error and then I need to hold the button a bit longer to get it to be a bit more of a bullet it's definitely floated a little too much but it is still just a really good play by that linebacker we'll call that one 90% user error though first in 10 from the 14 for the Utes that's a, kind of devastating for UConn as it's going to be a handoff Mitchell up the middle and Stokes is there along with Scruggs I'm anticipating them going to the air here with only three minutes left in the half you got to think that but no Terrell will make the tackle here with some help from Byler it's a third and four and it's an empty set for Wilson this time third down and four from the 20 but it's a design quarterback run Curvin shoot he's good for one TFL a game and he gets his here as that'll set up a fourth and eight Utah punt and the Huskies with an opportunity to score before the half. It was not a great kick, so we have really good starting field position. First and 10 from the 46, under two minutes left to play, but we are going to start with a handoff to Cam Edwards and that same linebacker that picked it off gets the stop. That's crazy. Second and nine as now we'll go to the air with Tobin. And he's going to have to scramble away using his speed to get out of the pocket and find some positive yardage. Evers just gets sacked there. Now it's a third and six anyway from the 50. Tobin has to step up again. The blockers just get beat instantly. That is incredible. A sack and now we have to punt. We left a minute 30 for Utah. And that is the transfer right guard Blake Franks getting beat and we just need a little bit more time and I did see the lane here to the left and with Tobin I tried to step up into that but it's just too late I mean literally if he just holds his block for a second longer it is genuinely unbelievable at times how bad this offensive line has been so they'll look to throw here and it's just a little check down to the right second and four from the 32 Wilson back to pass again there's a blitz coming coverage was pretty good but Stokes missed his opportunity for the pick and it's a first just a little over a minute left to play just trying to prevent the points if we can as Wilson launches one deep down the field needs Santos to make a play it's slightly overthrown that one was a little scary for sure second and 10 from the 39 as Wilson has time checks it down over the middle and that's a tackle for Gerard Byler and a pickup of nine third and one could get a huge stop here for UConn but instead it's a check down to Mike Mitchell the halfback and it's a first and 10 to the 44. Second down and five Utah burning one of those last two timeouts as Wilson will step up and breaks the tackle of Raheem Lovelace and it's a first and 10. Would have been a huge play from Raheem. Hard tackle to make that's for sure. First and 10 from the 32. As Wilson looks to throw shoot there under pressure hit as he throws but makes the play anyway Nico wins stepping out of bounds and stopping the clock 23 seconds left just looking to hold them to a field goal at this point as Wilson's back to pass again has a man open over the middle it's Mitchell but it's punched out by Hutchison now second and 10 from the 13 under 20 seconds left Wilson all kinds of time to throw finds his man Scruggs was there and they have to burn the last time out. He did prevent the touchdown, but it's a first down for the Utah Utes. And at the one, mind you, will they go to the ground? They easily could here, although they don't have a timeout to spare. Wilson scrambling and throws it away out of the back of the end zone. Will they try again? They are indeed trying again. Nine seconds left. If they run the ball and they don't get it, it's over for the half. He throws it away again. And now they'll settle for the field goal attempt. From the right hash... Not an automatic. I've seen the CPU miss this before. Not this time, though. So that makes it 10 to nothing for Utah as we head to the half. It's been an admirable performance from the UConn defense. And I think Dorian Tobin has played decently while on the field in replacement of Nick Evers. Just, of course, had that interception in the red zone that really cost us. Current update on Evers is that he is actually good to go. But I liked the way the offense looked with Tobin on that drive that ended in the interception. I'm going to give him another chance. This is a handoff to Robinson. Second and six from the 25. As it's going to be another handoff to Robinson up the gut this time. And just a couple yards short. Third and two. Tobin back to pass. Gets it to Marcus Angler. He has a blocker down the field. It's Shamar Porter. Runs past the block to the 20, to the 10. Touchdown Huskies, Marcus Angler. 
beating everyone off the line because he's got that kind of speed at the tight end position. And Dorian Tobin getting his first passing touchdown in his collegiate career. And I think a lot of that is in thanks to the block by Shamar Porter. We'll get another look at this here. Angler, of course, just outrunning his man. But then look at Porter holding that block forever. And that allowed Angler to find the end zone. But just like that, it's 10 to 7. Utah's lead cut down to three. Tight end is in motion. I imagine that this might be a run up the gut for Mike Mitchell. No, it's play action. And then a check down to the tight end. And Jarvarius Sims is there. That was a pickup of five. Setting up a second and five. And... Now it's a first and 10 as Matt Hoffman jumps off sides. First and 10 from the 35 after the penalty. So Wilson brings the tight end in motion. And it is a handoff to Mitchell and Scruggs is right there along with Santos, two yards. Wilson out of the shotgun will look to throw this time and it's just a little check down, a broken tackle. Jamie Santos just cost the team like 15 yards. That is just terrible. That should easily be a tackle for the corner Santos. Instead, it's a huge pickup for Utah and a first and 10 in Yukon territory as this one is a jet touch pass and gonna be just shy of the first down, second and two from the 39. And it's a handoff, Mitchell Cam Chadwick is there, but broken tackle, Santos there to make up for it. And now a third down and one situation. Do we commit to the run? I sort of think that we do. I'm thinking that this is going to be a run play. And it is. Mitchell breaks the tackle, though, again. We just can't make tackles. We should have had two different stops on this drive. And it's poor tackling. That time, I think it was Curvin's shoot. I stand corrected. It was Timothy Passmore Jr. We called the run play. We read it properly and just couldn't make the tackle. First and 10 from the 22 tight end in motion to the left side. It's Wilson's under center. Hands off to Mitchell, and he'll go down after a pickup of one. Second and nine. Again, tight end in motion. They love this little tight end motion. And it's another handoff to Mitchell. Need a tackle here from Scruggs, and he gets it done. Third down. Third and two from the 15. They send a man in motion, but then it's a handoff to Randall, and he gets the first. Scruggs with the tackle, but it's just a second too late. Second down and 10 from the 11. So the tight end in motion to the left side once more. And it's a handoff to Mitchell. Gets a block and then Terrell is there for the tackle. And it makes it a third and four. Third and four from the five. It is a pass play. In zone touchdown, Utah. Santos in coverage. Getting burned there. Just a little flat route. And the Utes will extend their lead back to 10. 17 to 7 will be the score. Just keeping UConn at arm's length. Let me know how you guys are feeling currently about Dorian Tobin and his performance thus far. It's a first and 10 from the 29 as we're back down by 10. And Robinson going to get the carry. Couldn't break out of that one tackle. Second and seven from the 33 as Tobin back to pass. Going to step up and gets the first sliding down at the 41. Another first and 10 empty set for Tobin. And it's a wide receiver screen set up for Brock Montgomery. And he gets two yards. Second down, a minute and a half left here in the third as Robinson gets the carry. And I mean, I don't even think he got the yard, but they gave it to him. Now a third and seven for Dorian Tobin and the Yukon Huskies as we'll try to get it over the middle to Jackson Harper. A little too much air under it again. That one looked strange. I tried to put a little more touch on it because I was scared of the linebacker potentially being able to get the pick here, but he ends up floating it like huge out to the safety. And Harper having to play like a little bit of defense there to not allow the interception. I mentioned it last episode, but I think that maybe UConn is a year early to the Big 12. We may not be able to contend, at least with these top dogs like West Virginia and Utah, as that should be a pick six for Kai Stokes. He drops it. Man, that would have been perfectly timed. But now it's a second and 10 from the 20, and it's a handoff Mitchell huge lane up the middle. I mean... All of the blocking was locked in. This one feels like it's slipping away from us. First and 10 from the 33 as Wilson is out of the shotgun. Brings the tight end in motion over to the left. And it's a fake handoff to Mitchell. And then Wilson with literally all day to throw. He wants it all. It's Scruggs to beat, but he knocks it away. Make it a second and 10 from the 33. And this time it's a handoff. Mitchell got good blocking again, but Joey Terrell was there. We head to the fourth quarter. 11 minutes left to play. 
third and four. It's a delayed handoff to Randall, and he's going to get the first. Cam Chadwick makes the tackle, but it's too late. And the tackling today has been poor, to say the least. First and ten from the 45. So they're out of the pistol. Wilson will hand it off to Mitchell. Blocking again is just immaculate. We got to maybe change something up on this defensive line because it is hard to watch. Because the blocking is just perfect time and time again. This time it's not, though. A delayed handoff for Mike Mitchell. Curvin Chute and Gerard Byler there. And now a third and eight from the 47. Surely they don't go to the ground here. They don't. But it is a screen set up for Randall. And he's got the first. Chadwick got pancaked. And it's a first and 10 for the Utes. Chewing a ton of clock and moving downfield. What else could you possibly want? Here are the Utah Utes. Hand off to Mitchell. Cuts this one back. And Terrell is there. Seemingly the only sure tackler on the team. Second and nine from the 43. Hand off Mitchell again. Terrell again. What a stud he is. And there's even a holding call here for the Utes. So it'll be second and 19 after the penalty. I did consider declining. I guess we'll see if my decision pays off. As it's going to be. A handoff to Mitchell. A lot of running room. Cuts it back to the outside. And I think we can say that my decision most definitely did not pay off. Touchdown, Utah. Mike Mitchell is making our defense look ridiculous. And it's not even really Mike Mitchell. He hasn't had to do that much. It's been the run blocking that has been elite today. And now it's going to be 24-7 for Utah here in the fourth. The offense takes back over again. First and 10 from the 25 as Tobin is back to pass. Stepping up and going to slide down at the first down marker. Need a miracle at this point if you're UConn, I think. So we'll try to get this to Jackson Harper. A little overthrown, but a diving grab gets it done. You may have noticed, by the way, Jackson Harper's number changed. He was previously wearing 19 and now wears number 1. First and 10 from the 50 as Tobin will look to throw again. And he wants Angler, and he actually holds on through that contact. Now it's a third and six as Tobin back to pass. Has a man. It's Jackson Harper. And that's good for a first down as he goes out of bounds at the enemy 32. Another big first down as Tobin back to throw again. Wants Montgomery. Another diving attempt and another first for UConn. From the 20th, first and 10. So we'll throw this one to Brennan Wooten, and that's another first as he goes out of the 10. The quick passing game doing numbers right now. So we look to throw with Dorian Tobin, or will we? We step up. He runs to the right. Nobody even close. Touchdown, Huskies. And that is easily the best UConn has looked all day. That drive looked like no problem for the Huskies, despite the struggles to move the ball in the first three quarters. It's going to be 24 to 14. Need a stop from the defense to give us a chance. So here we go. Need a stop big time from the Yukon Huskies defense. Hand off Mitchell trying to bounce it to the outside. Nowhere to go. And that's a great start. Need more of that. Second and 10 from the 20. Still enough time where I think Utah might go to the air, and they do on this occasion. And finding a man over the middle. Makes it a third and five. Third down and five. A big third down. And it's just given to him for free by Joey Terrell. That gives them a lot more time to chew the clock as it's a handoff. Mitchell need a tackle from Sims. He doesn't make it happen. Stokes can't tackle him. And oh my God. Thank goodness Santos is fast. But now the Utes are in the red zone already. That is just insane. They'll let this go to the two minute warning. Surely first and 10 from the 18. As this one is basically over at this point. Actually, they snap it like at the two-minute warning. And it's a pickup of about six. Second and four, handoff Mitchell. Absolutely nobody there again. And nobody can tackle him. And it's a first and goal. I'd use the timeouts. There's no point. This one is over. Game over. UConn drops to 0-2 in the Big 12 so far. Losing to Utah 24-14. It seems we're only capable of scoring 14 points per game at the moment. Two games, 28 points. Isaac Wilson, 18 for 27. Just a solid day. 200 yards, two touchdowns. Didn't really have to do anything because look at Mike Mitchell's numbers. 26 attempts. 193 yards and a touchdown. Only four broken tackles is wild. 103 of those 193 yards came after 
contact. He had two 20 plus yard runs and a 53 yard long. So if we're thinking about it, I think the two issues with this Huskies team it's the two lines. The offensive line is terrible. The defensive line might be worse, and that's with Raheem Lovelace on it, which, by the way, I've noticed he's not getting through really at all. I think he'd be more beneficial to us just back out in the middle of the field alongside Joey Terrell. So we'll make that change, make some changes to the D-line to hopefully try to get some more pressure or at the very least some more run stopping capabilities because I mean that is horrible we look at the Yukon numbers Evers only had four attempts on the day he of course was a huge injury risk after that and then from that point on I kind of just felt like it was Tobin's day for the rest of the day I was starting to feel comfortable with him and the ability to run up the middle for free first downs basically which by the way let me know what you guys think I think that there could theoretically be a bit of a quarterback controversy here I know on paper Evers is better but the just rushing ability that Tobin brings with such a bad offensive line is huge the amount of times he was able to just outrun edge defenders who got through simply because of his speed is unreal. So his ability to extend plays makes me want to play him a little bit more than it makes me want to play Evers, who is more of a pocket passer type, and we don't have a pocket to speak of at the moment. As for rushing, we mostly just were settled to the pass after being down. Robinson did average about four and a half a carry. Tobin averaged five, nine attempts for 45, and of course the touchdown. Receiving, it was like all angler. Four for 109 and a touchdown. Harper had a couple grabs. You know who we don't see on this list though is Shamar Porter. As for blocking, Torian Johnson and Taylor Spillman allowed a sack along with Blake Franks, Johnson and Spillman each with two pancakes. And then defensively, Joey Terrell, six solo tackles, 15 total. And then you see Byler here with nine. So I am thinking that Terrell and Lovelace make more sense in the middle at the moment than it does for Lovelace to be an edge rusher. But let me know what you guys think. I just haven't seen him doing much. Four TFLs for Kervin's Chew is insane. Two for Joey, two for Kai, and then a few for a number of other players. No sacks on the day. We couldn't get any pressure on Wilson. So as we advance the week, UConn 0 and 2, and now we get to play 16 ranked Arizona, who are currently 2 and 0, and they're even better than Utah on paper. Actually, I think Utah was an 85, Arizona an 86. So like I mentioned, really tough start to the year in conference for the Huskies. Definitely not going to be surprised if we're 0 and 3 to start the season. It does get a little bit easier versus Iowa State. In week number four, though, they are an 83 overall, definitely a little more evenly matched with us. All episodes for the rest of this season will be two games per episode. I like to do individual games in the episodes to start the season as we're kind of getting to know new players that you're going to see a lot. And then I don't mind switching to two games per episode like we had talked about last season. But anyway, that's going to do it for this episode. I really hope you guys enjoyed. If you find yourself coming back on the regular and you aren't already subscribed, go ahead and hit that sub button for me. It does help me out a lot. And I will see you guys in the next episode where we'll play Arizona and then Iowa State and hope that we can get one win against either of those two teams.